be ta- we'll be getting uh, we'll be getting uh, speakers like Aaron um, and VCs and some of the accounting people and to help you like you know articulate the business together. Uh, when I was first time founder, so I think we should get started. So my name is Amir. I'm uh, with Prakash. We're the founders of uh, Moral Accelerator. Um, our 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 passion really is is to work together with founders and help them get to from when they're starting the business to to the level where a Series A stage. So really, when I was founding my first company, it's like uh, Zikr and and became Long Tech after that. Is although I had subject matter expertise, um, first time entrepreneurs, it's absolutely the most difficult job that you can ever take on. Uh, don't mind the stress that comes with it. It is so. I mean, there are so many things you have to learn. You have to learn. You have to do your own sales. You have to do your own fundraising. You have to do your own um, office management. You have to do your own accounting. You have to figure out so many things when you when you uh, find a company, especially when you're bootstrapping it or you have a little bit of angel money. So it's very difficult. Prakash and I got together to put on these webinars and our accelerator to help founders navigate through rough waters that that comes as entrepreneurship and as you found in the company. So, and that's why we founded this series of webinar, um, which is focused towards. So today's webinar was focused entirely on um, when you're starting out a company. There's multiple options for you to do. How, which way to go? Is it should I bootstrap my company? Should I go to accelerator? Should I go to venture? Um, should I go to incubator? So that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I will give uh, our Prakash giving give a couple of minutes about uh, for himself, and then Aaron, please uh, if you can give us a little intro about yourself. Hi, good morning. Thank you for for joining us. Um, my name is Prakash. I, as Amir mentioned, Amir and I we together for last four plus years. Um, uh, and um, I. You're very hard to hear, Prakash. You, you cannot hear. A little louder, if you can, please. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, my name is Prakash. Um, uh, as Amir mentioned, um, I uh, and Amir we started this mall uh, with the sole um, objective of um, how we can bring our experiences um, and share it with the first-time founders. Um, and uh, there are a lot of things we learn during our journey, our own journeys, and and if we can bring those experiences and share it with others. Um, uh, like-minded uh, people, I think we 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 can definitely create some value there. So that with that goal, we started Moral Accelerator, and also I met uh, Aaron um, uh, from my Rochester connection and few other mentors. So um, uh, we we share the same vision, uh, and with that thought, I will let Aaron introduce himself and and talk something about. Um, his own journey. Thanks, Prakash. Uh, Aaron Newman, I'm the, the founder, uh, along with my co-founder, Zach, here on the call uh, of Scale FLX, which is a nonprofit uh, bringing software jobs to Rochester and the Finger Lakes region in upstate New York. Um, but I've also done four, I've, I've built, founded from an idea to acquisition for startups, all in software. Um, over the past 25 years, uh, and I have two more that I'm working on right now. So um, I've kind of done everything from self-funded, bootstrapped, VC, private equity. So kind of done a little sampling of each. Um, so uh, lots of interesting perspective on that. So I hope we'll we'll dive into that after the, the presentation by Amir. Thanks. Yeah, and hence you're the perfect candidate for this for this as a hosting with us. So I think if this that's that's why you find this webinar very interesting. So um, why do startup fundraise? And that's something I put together from uh, Dr. Evil. If you, you must have all seen Austin Powers, I hope so. It really is about world domination. That's exactly why you want to fundraise. If you want to run a business that runs uh, two times a EBITDA, you can run it. You just say bootstrap it. You can run it by yourself and have few employees and you'll be fine. But really, the goal is the founders' the ambition and world domination. We talk about companies like um, Uber and Lyft. Really, Uber really did not have an IP that the patentable IP. But however, they 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 expanded so fast, so rapidly 
they are in about 36 countries right now. And one of the largest, um, uh, the taxi company that I said, like, and everyone known about that, it's one of the largest taxi company without having a single taxi. And that's what the vision is about. That's why you want to fundraise. You want to get there. But that's that being said, the actual need that you have for fundraising, in, in our belief, is, is is funding the initial product. You know, starting a hiring few engineers, getting these beta or alpha out. You need about three to five engineers, some AWS credit, get things out. You need some funding for that. That's why you want to fundraise from friends and family or bootstrap or if you have some personal assets so there's a lot of ways to fund it but you also as you as you have that early pilot running then you want to talk about you capture market faster well if you have an idea and other people see see that this is a great idea there will be people there will be corporates who is going to who have more resources that can get that faster than you can because building a product is about six months timeline and with more resources you can cut it down to short so they have an advantage. So you want to fundraise so you can get there faster. Uh, with fundraising, um, any any channel you go to, there is uh, there is a cut that you can you, there's a network opportunity. If you're tapping into your you, whoever you're fundraising from in their network, in their network of potential customer, mentors, advisor, and that's really helpful. Doing a company by yourself is hard. You need that support group. Um, and as you scale, you need talent and how can you afford a top talent in Silicon Valley is one thing is fundraise because and people who are on this call from Silicon Valley do know the average engineer cost is about 180 K and that's just right out of right out of Berkeley. So you need capital to hire top talent for your um, the last thing is market validation and credibility. Once someone's invest in your company, which is not, which is not your friends or family, um, someone like an angel group or someone like angel group or someone like um, um, a VC group invest in, you get the credibility of them. So someone outside yourself believes in the company. So that's really what the credibility gets you and validation of your idea. I think we have someone had a question here and we're going to go open that. I should. Absolutely. So back in the days, um, you know, building your own company. I think, uh, and that Aaron, I would love, to, I, I would, I would love for you to join in this. In this, in, I think you asked this. And this question is back in early 2000 when you were building a company. There was no AWS. There was no public cloud. You have to have your own servers up and running. You have to have email clients and all that. And that was capital expensive. That was super capital expensive, uh, capital intensive endeavor to start out. So you needed more, more capital and, and all these, I remember, you know, the Google and everyone had used to have their first server. I think it's still at the Google office uh, campus. If you can see that's a cat. The starting out back then was way more expensive. The capital needed to start out a pilot of beta has significantly dropped down. You can also go to, and not just public cloud, Aaron, you can go out to India. Now there's places where you can have that done Ukraine, India. Outsource the product initial development. So, yeah, that, thoughts on that? Yeah, that startup fundraising has become less, but there's still a need for it. You're right. Um, I mean, it used to be you if you wanted to buy a version of Oracle, there was sixty thousand dollars, right? So, if you were trying to run something, you needed Oracle. Then you needed a Sun Microsystems box that was twenty five thousand plus dollars. So, you know, these are the type of things you can get away with for five hundred bucks today. Yes, absolutely, and and that's why it, so seed the seed capital itself, and and that's what we'll talk about that a little bit on later webinars. But I'll give you a little. So that's why the the thing called pre seed exists now, because the capital um, to to build a capital needed to build a pilot or a beta product has significantly went down. Uh, there used to be seed, and now there is a pre seed for that reason. And pre seed is the actual seed now. So we'll talk about that in later webinars. We have a whole webinar set up on that. So here's the four ways that we think it's you can you can start your company and grow your company. Number one is bootstrapping. Number two is going to incubator, accelerator, and venture capital. A lot of folks um, who has went through that, they have actually either picked one of these routes or they have actually picked all four of them and depend on the stage of the company and we'll talk about it a little bit so bootstrapping 
bootstrapping is really a company you're building from your own assets until own assets or, uh, or uh, early customer revenue. And as you all know, these company, these are the most famous bootstrapped companies. I guess maybe, I think one reason could be back in the days there was no term called venture capital when Apple and Microsoft was invented. So they had to figure out a way to bootstrap the company. There's a lot of pros and cons for bootstrapping. Um, my personal favorite is total ownership and control. You have 100% ownership. Founders have 100% stock of a company. There is no dilution. You're not giving it up to anybody. Uh, you may want to give it to uh, employees, but that's all up to you. Um, it, it, it really allows founders to experiment um, with the product so you don't have a pressure or you don't have a running, you, you, you don't, you're not in the tight, tight guidelines to put the product out, get it right first time, get the pilot customer. So if you mess up first time, or if you think the product is, there is no product market fit in the first try, you have different, you have, you can try it a couple times without you have to answer to any investor. There's a lot of cons with this, uh, with, which is like, you know, it takes much longer to get profitability. That means you are, you, you're slowly scaling, you're slowly, you're putting every penny that you're making from your own pocket or early customer revenue in, 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 in the product and, and scaling. So you, it takes much longer than venture capital. However, venture capital market has shifted on, it shifted on growth than profitability. So we'll, we'll touch base with that in a minute. Um, so product to call it product and growth. So your growth and product enhancement is, is really determined on how much money you're bringing in the door and how much money you have left in your customer revenue. So that's really is limited. Your growth is limited, your quality of product, that was the iterations you would do faster is definitely limited. Uh, founders are definitely under pressure from losing their own person. You all know the night, uh, according to Forbes, the 95% of the startups fail. So if you are putting your personal assets or family assets online, there's definitely a tremendous amount of pressure to deal with. Um, when you are funding your own company and no outside back, without no outside backing, there's a, I wouldn't say lack of credibility, but you have a lot more to prove than a venture funded uh, company that is coming out of Sequoia or coming out of right side or coming out of YC. So that credibility and brand, it takes much longer to develop for a bootstrap company. Aaron, any thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, that's, that is an important piece. Oh, am I, am I on? Mute? No, I'm not. Uh, where, and you know, because when I did bootstrap companies, it always was. I was typically competing it against companies that had raised $20, 50000000 million. And you'd get, they would get access to the type of things that bootstrapping is very difficult, like, a, like talking to a Gartner analyst or talking to a Forrester analyst. Or, um, you know, if, if uh, when people are writing, you know, about you, you do get a lot more credibility by being backed by a, a VC where, you know, somebody will write about you in the press much, uh, much more likely. And it's a, it's, it's a strange effect, but it truly, you do see it. Um, and you know, you're, you're having to go to market faster because your burn rate. So that product quality is another important factor, right? They, they might have a team of, uh, you know, uh, DevOps and and a security team and versus you just have two or three programmers, you're having to take shortcuts, you're having to sacrifice things that um, that you know can bite you long term. You're gonna have to pay for it later. So I think these it makes perfect sense. Absolutely, uh, and, and to the precautious point, um, it definitely. You know, it's, uh, I believe Prakash in this point, when you mentioned that it fo the bootstrapping focuses you, uh, focus you uh, forces you to focus on revenue and optimize every single dollar you spend. That's pros and a con depends on how you look at it. So if you focused on revenue, you, as, as Aaron, sh Aaron said, you're taking shortcuts, you, you are actually, um, sacrificing the product quality, um, because you're focused on, I wanted money in the door so I can actually for another engineer, or I can actually uh, hire this PR firm. So the, the, those both both of those things are can be taken pros and a con at the same time. And, and 
frankly, it's it's often most people, the vast majority of people don't have the luxury of bootstrapping because they just don't have the cash to do it, right? So you got to give up your current job, which maybe you're making a hundred, maybe more. So it's not just the cost of doing it, but it's giving up your day job as well. Yep. And, and sometimes you see people that don't want to give up their day job. It's hard to build a company trying to also have another job in in the side. Yep. Oh yeah, that's how I built my first company, but it was very tough, and I I, I totally agree with you, Aaron. And yeah, I I planned for um, uh, nine months bootstrapping, but it uh, went on for almost forever. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely takes takes time and time and that's what i said it definitely takes a lot more uh, longer to to grow and the growth is very limited um next one we talk about is incubator so to all of folks i mean there a lot of like you know there if you go on the web and anywhere you explore there's everywhere there's people consider yc as incubator and and there's not there's not really a differentiation out there in the world where people don't people don't you know confuse accelerator and incubator so there is that's what i want to put this put put them separately so to go along with it an incubator exists to really give you time to experiment find your idea an idea to product market validation a little bit and that's what it is it's, it is really it's really helpful for you to formulate so think about um as an entre entrepreneurship in residence program, think about corporate innovation program, think about university innovation program, where they give you some access to um, free space. Uh, no, but free, sorry, free space they give you. They give you some credits here and there. They give you some email credits. So it really is to define your idea into a product. So even before the accelerator stage. So if you if you have an idea. You need some some advice from university mentors or professors or corporate guys. Um, there, that's where you actually would go, and you take your idea and you bring it out. And, and at this time, that's where exactly they give you. So there's pros and cons to that as well. Pros is uh, you are among the among the the, the mentors, among the the, the professors, uh, among the the corporate innovation people. So the, the environment is really supportive and and inspiring. Uh, everyone is there to help you. Everyone, so you don't like by yourself, you have, you have support and you have help out there. Um, support and uh, support structure and, and advice definitely count. So it's not someone giving you, see these are SME subject matter experts giving you advice. They, you give you, they give you free resources as we talked about. They, most of them give you free space, affiliate credit, et cetera. There is quite a few of them. Uh, if you need a list, go out there and find out. It's on, it's on the, it's on Google and, and being part of an incubator. So I can give you a couple of names. So SAP.io. So I, every one of you uh, working in uh, logistics, um, they, they have an incubator where people, companies can go and, and actually pitch them the idea and they give you free space, a couple of mentors and work with you for about six months. So incubator program is generally six months to a year um, where you can still keep your job and you're still working on that idea, refining it. Um, before you actually raise capital, but being part of incubator, it gives definitely gives a company a credibility. So if a company coming in tomorrow in our, in our platform and saying that, oh, well, I am part of SAP.io or I am part of Ali or I'm part of a thousand others that we know uh, or capital factory, we definitely give them a serious look. It's, it's the reason, as Aaron said, it's definitely the brand that carries the, the, the actual big brand that incubator brand that carries with you. Now, there's definitely cons with that as well. Uh, they are heavily programmed events. So there's too many sessions, there's too many networking events. So it gives you very less time to focus on your company itself. So it's very easy to get driven, uh, not driven, it's, it's very easy to get distracted from all those networking events and all those mentors giving you 500 different ideas. And one thing I will tell you uh, in startup world, Everyone, so if you pitch idea 500 people, if you pitch the same idea 500 people, those 500 people will give you 500 different advices. So some, once in a while, you do have to think about what your gut feeling is. So really, too many sessions, too many distractions, and there is no capital investment, There's almost nothing. So 98% um, incubators don't invest any of the capital upfront. Aaron, any thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, the incubator is the one area that I probably haven't done. Um, but I, I, I shy away or I'm careful around incubators because exactly what you're talking about here, right? It's a great place to learn and to explore, um, but it's very easy to get comfortable and to not push your idea forward. And I see so many people end up in incubators for years, literally. And, you know, for me, I'm a lot more of, you know, I, I, this is an incubator is a great thing to do when you're young, when you're getting your first one off the ground. Uh, but so many times the pros turn out to be cons because they don't force you, you know, as Prakash said, they don't force you to optimize and they don't force you to get things done. So, you know, they're healthy, but they're probably not what I would consider the, the, the best way to push an idea forward quickly. Absolutely. So Prakash, quick question on that. Um, if you can talk about, you have a, a serious, all, I mean, all two, all three of, um, among all three of us, you have this experience in incubators. You want to give your feedback on that a little bit? Well, um, one of the incubators that I am closely um, associated with is a, a kind of plug and play in the Silicon Valley. And uh, what I noticed is people go there, they get uh, get to know other founders, they get to meet other um, uh, mentors and and uh, like-minded people. They attend um, uh, seminars, webinars, or uh, in-person meetings, um, uh, all, all these benefits. But I think, um, as you mentioned, the, the push for making progress on the product is not there, um, uh, typically until unless the, the founder is self-driven, they know exactly what to do um, uh, and how to leverage these kind of setups uh, to their benefit. Um, uh, focus is the key and, and with the speed, if you can keep the focus going and, and move with the speed, I think this could be a leveraging place. Absolutely. And then one thing Zach mentioned is definitely an opportunity cost is a huge con to this. Yeah. Uh, the moment, the, the amount of time you're waiting and, 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 and tweaking around the, with an incubator, you're losing the focus that you're losing the, the, the amount of time that you can actually be building on your company. So absolutely correct. Thank you, Prakash. Um, next on our journey is it's accelerator. So accelerator is, uh, some people say it's above uh, incubator, or some people say it's quite quite different. Uh, I I think they go hand in hand. Uh, we work with a lot of incubators ourselves, where we source out the companies. So, accelerator is when the idea is there, when the prototype is there, is to accelerate you from idea prototype stage to seed, pre seed seed stage. So what that means is, and we'll go that in a minute. So accelerator comes with a with. A, array of mentors, some initial capital. So to leave your job, you need some capital, right? If you're, if you're working on this um, and, and really want to focus on the company, uh, you have a prototype and you, you want like, I'm ready to leave my job, but you need some capital to sustain, right? For next six months, you need some capital to put all your resources. So you need about from 25 to about 50 to 100, like depends on accelerator. Um, you need some capital that can give you some leeway to, to, you know, focus on this company and grow it initially. So that's the biggest pro for the uh, accelerator itself. Accelerator seems to have a serious array of mentors um, and investors that they work with. So, you know, fellow founders all qualified, fellow mentors are mo more qualified and uh, not corporate di driven as the incubators are and definitely the investor network. So you're connected with these trifecta of network that then for your support system. Um, accelerators also provide free space, affiliate credits like AWS, MailChimp, et cetera, which gives you, uh, in our case, we provide about 150K worth of credits on top of the investment. So, which gives you a lot more, so you don't have to spend much money in taking, scaling that company slowly up. And definitely solid support from mentors. So in our case, we work with 135 plus industry expert mentors who are there for full support. So, for example, if the autonomous vehicle car, we work with the two large group of companies, uh, Jaguar, Land Rover, um, three, three actually, Jaguar, Land Rover, Hyundai, and Volvo. So we have the people that work in those groups that can give you the right advice 
and they also have a corporate uh, the, in, the investment arm that actually help you to invest in your company once you're ready for them and definitely the credibility so if a yc graduate company if um if a 500 graduate company if a model graduate company you definitely have credibility in the market uh, because the press definitely as Aaron said on top of that investors take you seriously because someone did the due diligence on you someone do the due, due diligence on you as a founder someone did the due diligence of your market opportunity someone did the due diligence of um of your product so there is initial vetting has been done so they take you seriously on that and definitely cons and we're in the initial one um we're definitely not are the right fit for that we don't have a heavy programming but a lot of accelerators have also have heavy programming by four to five days of program sessions that you have to attend um at this level we believe the founders know a lot because they've been working on this company for the last six to eight months um we just want to give them a, 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 give them some of the session and give them time and time to work on the company. And if they have questions, we're, we're there for that. And YC does the exact same way is they don't, they don't, they don't really um, lock you up in sessions all day. They just, if you have questions, come talk to mentors. It's really what they give you uh, your own playground to play with to bring your company. And definitely another con is the equity stake. And I believe if you find the right accelerator, the equity stake that you're given in versus the benefit, you should always judge that in any 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 structure that you get in any of these structures. So equity equity stake that you give it in versus the benefit that you're getting out of it. Benefit has to be always up. So, um, so I think um, I have a couple question here. Uh, do you work with late stage companies? Absolutely, we do. Uh, we definitely we don't uh, we don't really discourage. Uh, companies who are later stage who find our programming and our network to be strong, uh, to be beneficial for the company. So it's all about the companies coming in and if they find our network and our um, our accelerator program can be beneficial for you next six months down the road, which includes the fundraising or the network that you're going to get out of um, get, network you can get about corporate corporate partners of ours. Uh, or mentor, so happy to take a look at that. Guys, any uh, precaution? And Aaron, any other feedback on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, let me throw out there. I I think this this is where people do get hung up on, you know, the the thing that's very easy to measure, which is you know how much equity and what's the amount of investment, right? Which is probably you know the same way when people negotiate valuations, you know, it's the dollar amount that that gets the most attention is probably the least important factor. Really, it's the it's the other things that come with it, right? And and so when you're going to find an accelerator, I think it's so important to find the one that has the best connections, the one that has the best mentors, the one that has the best program. So it's all about quality when it comes to accelerator. You know, if you get a crappy accelerator and you're giving up one percent, that's wasted. Versus if you have to give up more percent, but you actually get connected with the right people, that makes all the difference in the world. Right. You know, it's unfortunately we still live in a world where it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, and, you know, and, and having those connections and, and, you know, and, and what a good accelerator is going to bring is, is going to, uh, is, is really important. And, and, you know, a bad accelerator probably doesn't add much. A good accelerator probably adds way more than what they get out of it. Absolutely. Um, as, as Aaron, you were spot on really is. At the end of the day, founders themselves are a judge of what you think of an accelerator is really you think is going to benefit your company. And you think that that 5%, 6%, 7%, or 4% that you've given up is going to make your company valuation double, triple, or quadruple. And right. that's that at the end of the day, it varies. It depends on network, depends on investment that you're going to get out of it, depends on people, your your potential customers you're going to get out of it. So that's all about. So last one of this is venture capital. So venture capital is everyone knows. I hope everyone knows venture capital is here. It's a quasi form of private equity, uh, which definitely work very different than private equity. It's a usually a very high risk um, and, and potential um, very high risk business. So pros and cons of that, absolutely. So pros definitely is no personal guarantees. If I if I take 5 million or, for example, if we invest in somebody's company, 
we're not taking any of their personal credit checks or anything. Uh, if we, if, and, and this is always the key that if, if, if the founder wins, we win, if founder fails, we fail. So it's like a person, it's more of a partnership than actually a lending. So that's what I really recommend. Definitely network effect. Every venture capital firm, have partners that have been in the, either in the industry for, for a long time that they're investing in, or they have a solid advisory network or mentor network or SME network they work with. So you get a lot out of not just the money, you get you get the potential investors that can come on board who, who these investors have network of just like we do. You get potential potential customers which which all these investors have network at and mentors. So you get a lot along with the investment to these guys. Um, the venture capital could always help you scale. If someone putting a million dollar in a company, uh, you have a lot, you can hire, hire a great engineering team, great marketing team and scale your product. And that, that will take your growth time about 10 X really at this point, coerce is a bootstrap and definitely the credibility. If you get money from Sequoia, you should be going to wall street general and telling them that, or they will be coming out to you. So definitely the credibility that coming in big or even in medium sized firms who have been investing in a while. So in our re recent case, yesterday, we found out that um, our, one of our company is, is just got our uh, lead investor in, in, in um, one of our company. They're going to announce, but I can tell you that I can't tell you the name of the company yet. They got a lead investor um, from one of the venture firms and that only got when Lyft said um, that they heard that Marl invested in them. So it's really the credibility that comes in. Um, and Quan, definitely the same equity stake though. So just like picking an accelerator, you should always pick, like, look at the same thing as a venture partner, not just the money, what are they bringing along with it? So you are giving up the equity, but is the equity worth it or not giving up? So that's the con for it, giving up the equity of the company. There is, so gas it or pack it attitude. So seed investors don't do this series, they do. So a lot of you folks have even heard of, so Series A investors, when they write you a check, they give you 18 months to just burn that cash. And if you don't, then there's a liquidity clause on that, on that some term sheet. And that's a, that's a, that's a normal Silicon Valley practice, which I think has stopped recently with the COVID era, but it used to be, we give you $7 million, you have to burn it. You have to scale, 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 and that's all it's going to be. So that's the attitude with it. And they, a lot of these terms should come to the liquidity clause in 18 months. Um, the last one is so VC fundraising is not a, it's not a short process. So uh, some of you have seen Shark Tank and like, I'll write you hundred dollars, hundred, hundred K check, or I'll write you 500 K check with this much equity. No, it does. It's, this is not reality. Reality is you have to be engaged with VC for about three months or four months before they write you a check. So they could be your mentor, they could be advising you, they could be going back and forth with you. It takes about three months, three to six months, depends on market trends and cash availability in the market. That's much, that's much time it takes for VC to write you a check. So it's a long time consuming process, definitely an opportunity cost to building a company. So think about it, you know. So last thing I say is, oh, sorry, Aaron, um, any feedback on that? Yeah, I mean, it, the interesting the venture capital is interesting, too, is you got to make sure you're aligned with them. They want a big, big return, right? They're not looking at doubling or tripling their money. So you have to make sure you're going to be aligned with them where, you know, you're all going. They're swinging for the fences, yep. right? VCs don't like to hit singles and doubles. They like to hit home runs, So, which is not always in the same. If you're the startup founder, you can have different goals depending on risk profiles and such. So you got to make sure you understand that when you go into a venture capital world. Absolutely. And, you know, definitely be aligned with them and definitely make sure you choose the right firm. Um, back in the days, I don't know if, if anyone has Silicon Valley TV show, if people have seen it or not, you can shop, you, you used to get, you can take a term sheet for one VC, you can shop it around. Now those term sheets come with no shopping cart. That kind of, you know, it has changed a lot uh, for, for good, actually, for other founders, really. So, so last thing people ask me, and this is very normal question, people ask me, what is right for me? What is right for my company? So I really think it all depends on stage where you are at and mentality where you are. 
Um, so bootstrapping, if the founders are really comfortable putting their assets on the line and, and comfortable with, you know, comfortable with putting their assets in line or family assets in line and really ready to slowly grow. Absolutely. If you think that, you know, you have some unique, you have a patent on something or no one else can copy in no time. Absolutely. Bootstrap the company. There's been, as we went before, there's been some great bootstrap companies. The last one was GitHub. I mean, a huge company that way. Like, you know, um, uh, incubator is really recommended for founders, as, as Aaron said, uh, young founders, first timers who are, who have, um, who are working on the full time and another job, but they can attend the incubator on the side. They're really working on the idea. They have an idea, but there's nothing there besides the idea. There might not be a presentation deck, but that gives them, incubator gives them solid structure to get to that point, find a presentation deck uh, and, and pitch it to the right accelerator or, or family, friends and family. So give them that business plan idea, uh, business plan and pitch, pitching idea. Accelerator is absolutely meant for founders who have figured out this is the idea. This is what they have a plan in place. This is the idea. This is the prototype. This is how I'm going to build and scale it. And this is what I need. So those definitely is, is what accelerator meant for. Venture capital always varies. And that again, depends on the market, the cash availability in the market and market trends. So, but average on average, venture capital always look for at least one early playing there's a there's a there's a product in, in hand and there at least one early paying or non-paying customer and again this is b2b by the way this is not b2c um we are b2b investors that's what we know it trends like that a lot more so in b2b space uh venture capital uh, list like to see at least one paid or non-paid customers if it's non-paid it could be a pilot that's running um so they need to see some sort of uh, customer validation. Uh, LOI also works in a lot of cases. So, you know, pick and choose what you think is right for your company. We're here for giving you advice like this could, this is our recommended idea. Um, uh, so any questions uh, uh, on, on that before we go in? Um, Aaron, any feedback on this? Like, what do you think? Uh, no, I think you, I think you got most of the points. I mean, the, the other point that was sometimes, and, and, you know, getting VC is hard still, right? So sometimes you don't have a choice, right? Bootstrapping may be your only choice because, you know, venture capital can be difficult, especially when you're outside of the Valley, right? In, in Silicon Valley, there's a little bit more of a, you know, it's, it's easier to get funding, but when you're in Rochester, New York, or, somewhere else sometimes vc even the best companies have a hard time getting venture capitalists i mean i know multiple of my companies have gone through for various reasons just wasn't able to raise a dollar of 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 investment so sometimes you, you, it's almost like you need to plan to bootstrap and if you happen to get vc consider yourself one of the lucky ones yeah all right <laughs> Or get um, get into an accelerator who has a deeper connection <laughs> with the uh, yes. Silicon Valley type of uh, organizations, and they can be the conduit. Perfect. Yes. Absolutely. No any for cash. Well, Marl is there. The next slide. <laughs> Marl, is, Marl, we're here uh, as we said. We're dialing up into Rochester community, really, and our plan is to uh, work. We're working together with Rochester community to. Hopefully, get things in order to open a Marl two over in Rochester. And the one benefit, biggest benefit, really is, we'll be uh, we'll be giving the whole all the portfolio companies Silicon Valley access and our network here. So it's more think about the portal to Silicon Valley. That's kind of what you're opening over there. And I see a few questions here. Zach, sorry, I took me a minute to see those. Um, I got a better question actually than that one, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Um, so. One thing that I just kind of noticed in here, we're talking about VC or accelerator, these different options, but um, could you talk a little bit about inside maybe the different types? For example, like I went to one VC talking about an idea a couple of years ago, and he was like, uh, no, the size of our fund, if your company's not going to return like $9 billion, it's not worth us investing. So like, I can't go to that company that's got a two and a half billion dollar fund, uh, you know, with an idea that's going to hit a market that's only going to, make let's say 100 million or 200 million dollars a year 
um, can you just talk a little bit about the different like types of VC and then where, I don't know, just, just kind of riff on that? That's a great question, Zach. And, and that's, I, I'm very much familiar with that. So VC investment key is one, is look at the size of the fund that they have. They want every single company they invest in. It's not 1X, it's not 2X, it's not 200X. It's the amount of fund that they want to return. So, so for example, if I have a $10 million fund and I am investing in five or 20 companies, I want that 20, every single company of those 20 have a potential to return $10 million, my entirety of the fund, every single one of them. And that also is, is a math calculation really simply is, is the amount of stock that you, amount of, amount of equity that you own in that, that worth, that should worth 10 million. Otherwise I'm not going to go in. That's a standard format. So that's really what they look at is, is look at the amount of fund. If a fund is, let's say, a billion dollar fund, and if they're investing in about 500 companies or more, they want those 500 companies, not just those 500 companies to return that, but that equity they hold in every single company should return a billion dollars. Sure. That's, that's the basic math they do. I think you asked um, uh, another question is, when to really formulate a, a relationship with VC Accelerator when you are really working the idea in your head, really, I believe it is always great to reach to mentors uh, network or, or talk to VCs if you can get to them and ask them for feedback. A lot of VCs, I mean, you know, if you're going out of blue, VCs don't respond to any emails. If you email on them, 90% of them don't. But if you know someone, the best way to reach to the VC is if you know the founder or entrepreneurs they have invested in. Go to Crunchbase. If if, if you have any chance, you have a better chance getting a hold of a founder of a company of Series A or C stage company as entrepreneurs because we entrepreneurs really look out for each other. So you have a better chance ask that entrepreneur for an intro once you ask them to. So they can make an intro to you. Go talk to the VC. There is no really, uh, uh, there's not really, um, nothing should stop you, even if free company to get feedback from VCs or accelerators. We're always, our door is always open. I mean, uh, one quick point before you go and approach any VCs, make sure you do your homework well. Absolutely. absolutely. There yeah. should not be any shortcut because uh, you might ruin the VC relationship if you're uh, um, uh, a half baked uh, concept and you are not fully prepared to have the right discussion, then they might not uh, contact you back any any time in future. So do your homework very well, thoroughly, as much detail as possible. And uh, also the prototyping cost nowadays is so cheap that you, I, I think you should build a prototype or clickable prototype as quickly as detail as possible, as mature as possible before you go and, and talk to any investors or VCs because that will give you the credibility. Absolutely. And then by doing your homework really does mean make sure this is the right VC for you. So not even, not all VCs are created equal. It's about look at the stage, look at the expertise they invest in. If there are multiple partners in a single firm that invest like, you know, like there's more of a generalist, look at the right partner who has expertise in that sector you're forming or look at the partner that who has actually invested in that sector. So do your homework, really. Don't go to a logistics guy for a, a B2C company. So find the right partner to approach. Um, so to, uh, to, to go over that, like we're, found, we're working on Marl, and what is Marl? <clears throat> Marl is a 5G accelerator, 5G deep tech accelerator that focuses on early stage companies, early to mid stage companies. Um, we provide them with, um, we work hands on with them. We have a cohort of about uh, eight companies per cohort and two cohorts per year. And our basic criteria of companies is that minimum criteria is they have to solving a 5G pain point, moral 5G pain point. Moral stands for mobility, autonomous robotics and logistics. These are the sectors that we invest in. It could be software, it could be software enabled hardware, uh, but not really fully hardware. I mean, we are happy to take a look at that if there's opportunity for it, but we stay away from that, but we have to take a look at that. Our second criteria is technology founders. There has to be one technology co-founder in the company because it's deep tech. Everything is so um, technology-based. 
we need to see a working prototype. It could be um, an initial prototype, an alpha that can actually work. If it's hardware or software-enabled hardware, it needs to have something that works or software, we would love to check it out and that it works. You need to have at least three, like if you must be enrolled in the incubator or at least have six months of runway that you think your company is gonna exist in the next six months. And the uh, last two are really, if you have raised any friends or family rounds or put you have any, any of your money. So if you have put some of your money, it's ready to skin in the game. So we don't wanna invest in somebody who just like, yeah, sure, if it works out, works out. If not, then I'm just like, sure, I'll, I'll just go back to the job. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. You, but you have to at least put some skin in the game that we see that you're actually working out this. And last very thing is capital efficient. So we don't wanna invest in something. We generally stay away from something that require a million dollar hardware per per machine or something like that. So that capital expense, because that's gonna be a lot more. Um, you need a lot more money to grow that company. Sorry, this is apologies for this. It's definitely the PDF. Uh, it kind of get messed up, but our 12 weeks program really focuses on uh, five minute pitch, fundraising, diversity, inclusion, HR, lean startup mode, branding, customer development, product development, uh, business model, financial accounting, fundraising, and everything that a company really needs to get started. So we really focus on all these things. We bring out speakers who are uh, mostly venture, venture guys or gals that can help us um, give, a, give a better uh, sessions on these. So this is kind of our cohort. Next cohort starts at August 10th. Uh, our application deadline is uh, July 1st, 2020. So come talk to us, come check us out. Um, again, this, I think this is definitely the presentation. So we take the company with pre-seed states, pre-seed idea prototype stage, and we work with you to make sure our companies, when they go after our program, they're seed series A ready. Depends on the type of company came in. Our partners are about 20 plus other funds and corporations that work with. A lot of your names, you may recognize these names. These are our partners that we work with. We have mentors, it's um, about, this was 35 plus, we have about 100 mentors now. Um, a lot of our mentors are actually um, our VC guys who have been partners of the firm, like, you know, on top that you see, who really wanna work together with you on this. And this is Prakash and me, we both have a great operational experience, uh, banking and finance experience, and Prakash comes with uh, a lot of start experience. So we're here to support you any way you need. Any questions so far? Not really on time. Do we have any questions here? Guys? Any anything? No, not exactly 5G devices. Uh, no, no. So we have a question here. So only the 5G devices that help you to be. Not exactly. So if you have a product in uh, mobility. Uh, or if you're making a, 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 for example, a LiDAR solution, which is a state of the art LiDAR solution that you're working on uh, for, for autonomous cars, absolutely. So 5G is a technology, it's, it's more of an infrastructure. So we work on 5G use cases, but in deep tech. So solutions has to be in deep tech. They could, but the only thing we look at is like these solutions have to have some benefit of 5G, right? So that's kind of, so mobility, autonomous robotics and logistics but not 5G infrastructure, yeah. Any other questions we have here? So I have a, this is a Nate, Nate Wilkins. I have a question um, regarding, since 5G is gonna be so heavily federally regulated, um, being frequency and infrastructure, um, what kind of eye are you guys keeping on that? Do you have SMEs um, involved in, in that at all? 5G is definitely heavily regulated, but right before the COVID crisis, uh, FCC has been working really with the companies like Verizon and T-Mobile, and Ericsson actually is the third one, 5G providers, are working with them uh, to make sure the regulations are all up to code. Um, we really follow our guidelines on our mentors and our people that we work with in companies like, as I said, Verizon, um, Verizon T-Mobile that we work with, as well as Ericsson, Juniper Network, so the, the companies were making equipment for 5G. So we follow the lead on that one. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Any questions so far? All 
right. So, Aaron, any um, closing thoughts, arguments, anything? And pre pre precaution, Aaron, please. I think we're coming to the end of the hour. No, I thought it was a good, uh, good presentation. Uh, you know, I mean, we do you know what our next session is going to be What the topic is Zach. Do you have it off the top of your head? Um, let me pull it up and I think there might be a guest on that one as well. Yes, I, I believe it should be fundraising 101, but I, I think uh, Zach okay. has a better idea on that. So everyone, if 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 you found this interesting, please share it and uh, let's try to get uh, uh, more people to the next session. We've about doubled from our last session. So if we do that again, we'll start heading the right direction. So, um, you know, come back and again, and I'll, I'll be pushing the messaging out, but come back again in a couple of weeks and uh, the fundraising 101. Do we know who the guest is? Yes, Chrissy Myers from Root VC, R O O T. Yep. So, uh, Root VC is awesome too. So, that'll be a great session. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you for showing up, and and we are looking forward to for you to be there in our next session. One last one last uh, point is um, any of you from the participant uh, of today's webinar, or if you know any of your friend who are thinking of uh, and tinkering with some startup idea into the space that um, we are in in and and enterprise five G applications. Please visit our website mallaccelerator.com and apply there. And we are actively recruiting the, the startups for our fall cohort. So uh, you, you can get ahead in the line um, before we kind of fill out all eight startups uh, seats. So thank, thank you. you. So awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.